Yo guys, welcome to the PC Joe video. Today, guys, we are going to be taking a look at my top 8 Mad Party Dugong deck here. Yes, I played this deck to the Hexter TCG tournament last night, and I ended up making top 8 with the deck, uh, which is pretty insane. I honestly was not expecting to do that well with this deck. Um, but here we are, and it was, it was a lot of fun to play. That's why I played the deck in the first place, because when I made the video on the deck, I was like, yo, this is a fun deck to play. Um, I'm gonna try it for Hexter and I did change the deck up a little bit from yesterday's video as you can see there are some changes made for starters I didn't have the Eldegoss originally. I also didn't play a 2-2 Dugong line um, But I changed that and I added in the second Dugong line and I also added in the Eldegoss And I will say I don't really know if you really need the 2-2 Dugong line uh, But I did have it in there and Dugong was pretty good in this deck Yes, Dugong is kind of like the whole like highlight of the deck, but Dugong is really good um, at taking out low HP Pokemon and not only is this good against like any like stage 2 deck This Pokemon can clean up Jirachis and can clean up stuff like Zigzagoons Which is kind of the reason why this card is so good in here is because it can attack with a triple energy So you can just go triple energy on your Dugong, dual blizzard, knock out Jirachi and knock out a Goon But the only way you can pull that off is through Roxy Weezing, which we do have three of in here And then we have the four Roxy. So we are gonna try to Roxy here with Dugong to knock out stuff like Jirachi and Zigzagoons. Now, Dugong was honestly one of the best cards in this deck. I don't think I used it in the last game I had on stream against Luke Metal, but I did use it on stream against Bulcephalon. Um, there were multiple, multiple games where this Dugong was taking up KOs. Like, I think I had a game against Baby Blounds where this Dugong took me four of my prizes. So, like, this card was ridiculously good at beating Bulcephalon. I will say this deck... Um, is really good against Bulcephalon. It's probably just a little scared of ADP. I think like this deck might not be able to beat ADP That was like the one thing I was scared of like if I play this deck I'm going to probably lose to all my ADP matchups and luckily I didn't play against a single ADP deck though the entire tournament which is kind of surprising I I thought I would play against ADP, but I never played against a single ADP deck I played against I think the deck I played against the most was Bulcephalon I played against I think four baby blown decks something like that like it's my best matchup by far like after beating I think I played against Blounce the first round and then after beating it I was like oh this is definitely my best matchup the Dugong puts in so much work in that matchup I did lose to one Blacephalon matchup and I think it was on stream actually um we'll kind of talk about that because there are definitely changes I would make to this deck which I'll talk about um yes this is the list though um I will say the Eldegoss was kind of a last minute include I had Crobat in here and then I was like what about Eldegoss? Because it can get you back a boss, it can get you back a Roxy, it can get you back a Research. Um, and it could be really good if you're trying to do those combos. Not only that, is since we are kind of aggro and we're discarding, um, you know, stuff so often, there are going to be times where we might run out of boss's order. So maybe we can use Eldegoss to boss, because you kind of need to gust up two prizers to win a lot of your matchups. So I threw in the Eldegoss, and long and behold, the Eldegoss was actually a very helpful. There were so many moments where this card actually helped me out in this deck. So it was a great include. I'm glad I included it. And I didn't have Crobat. Crobat wasn't very good. Eldegoss proved to actually be pretty good. Another pretty cool card in here was the Orang Guru. Um, the reason it's in here is to conserve resources um, because there are going to be so many times where like I was discarding like three energy off of a research because my hand was just that bad. It was like, okay, the game gave me three energy in my hand and then I had to research them away. But because I had not Orang Guru in play, I could Primate Wisdom 1 on top of the deck and try to conserve it. And it actually helped me a lot of times. Uh, you can also use it to like conserve like Eldegoss or Boss or Dedenne or even a Supporter. Also, it can uh, help you against Marnie. That was another reason why this was in here is because it helps against Marnie. Um, if you have multiple Supporters in your hand, you can actually Primate Wisdom 1 on top of your deck. Now, I made a few mistakes. I, I think I made a mistake on stream too, where I accidentally Primate wisdom a Supporter on top of the deck because I was scared of Marnie. And then I shuffled my deck after because I completely forgot. Hey, look, it was, it was 1 a.m. or 12 a.m. I was I was really tired. I, I, I was kind of I was a little tired, but I did make a few mistakes. But yes, the Guru also helps you against Marnie, where you can put a supporter on top of your deck. So if you get Marnie, you're gonna draw a supporter because you we only have seven supporters in here alongside the uh, two Dedenne and the Eldegoss. So like you kind of need to do that. So conserving your supporters, conserving resources, helping you against Marnie is makes the Guru actually a very useful card in here. Another card. That was MVP. There were even times where we were even drawing one card it was making all the difference. Like, I'm telling you right now, there are so many moments where Primate Wisdom drew me the card I needed. I'm not even kidding. 
I did get a little lucky. And then of course we have the Roxy Weezings. Of course we are going to be trying to Roxy the Weezing away to put 70 da or put 10 damage on a Pokemon with 70 HP and then we knock it out to a Blizzard. That's kind of the whole idea. Not only that, these can also add extra damage on the board too, on Pokemon. Like, you know, say like a Zamazenta, you can put it down to 220 HP, um, which makes it easier to knock out. Instead of having to do 240 damage, you have to do 220 damage. So just a lot of moments where like even just putting damage on extra Pokemon helped you out in the long run. Um, but that's it for the Pokemon. Yep, there's 31 Pokemon dot deck. That's the name of the deck. That's how I like it. Um, some other Pokemon I would maybe add. I Again, I'm not too sure if I really feel like this deck needs the 2-2 Dugong. Um, a lot of the games, I was only using one Dugong. I had the 2-2 just to be on the safe side, especially because Dugong was putting in so much work against Baby Blondes. Having the 2-2 maybe wasn't the worst thing ever, but m I do think you could go down to a 1-1 line or even a 2-1 line because I do find Seal has a target on its head, but you can go down to maybe like a 1-1 line. I do actually think this deck should probably play a Mew. There was a game where I actually ran into an Inteleon player, but the guy... We ID'd because we were both going to make it top 16. So I do think that Mew should go in this deck too. Something I definitely would add would be a Mew. But yeah, I'd probably just add a Mew in here for sure. I don't know if I would really add any other Pokemon to be honest with you. I think the Pokemon line was fine. Yes, yeah, 31 Pokemon might be overkill, but believe me, with everything in the deck, 31 Pokemon is actually fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely I think a Mew should go in this deck for sure, 100%. Now, another card I probably want to play is a Air Balloon or multiple switching cards. There were a lot of times where I was getting gusted and stuff was getting trapped. I think I ended up losing two of my games. Or no, it was three games. I definitely, I lost my top eight match because I ran out of energy and my opponent trapped a Bunnelby. So I do think this deck could probably try to fit in another switching card or two. I think Air Balloon should go in here, especially allow, allowing you to retreat Dugong and Guru for free. I think this deck could probably play an Air Balloon or two. Maybe that's where you cut the Dugong before you go... 1-1 one, one Dugong, throw in a Mew, and throw in an Air Balloon. Uh, you can maybe just cut the U-Turn board out of the deck, too. This was actually kind of helpful, though. Being able to uh, infinitely reuse it was really helpful, especially if your opponent was trying to bring into Denny's to buy a turn, because they know you only have four, you know, twins and four triples, and then twin only works on Denny's. So having the U-Turn board was actually really helpful. I do think this deck definitely needs another switching card, 100%. I think an Air Balloon or two is what you probably want to play. And, of course, the rest of the deck is just ball searching cards and, and supporters and energy. That's that's it. You got 31 Pokemon. You have Evo, Wincent, Great Ball, Calm, Quick Ball. I honestly don't even know if the, if I had the right amount of Pokemon Search. I don't know if, you know, I should have played more Evo, Incense. I don't know if I, you know, should have played more Calms. We have 31 Pokemon. Calm is, like, always active. Great Ball, obviously, is really good in here, too. And then the Quick Balls. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, I had the Coffin in here instead of 3 Weezing because Coffin is something you can search out with Quick Ball. And there were actually moments where I needed a Quick Ball for a Coffin to Roxy it to knock out Jirachi with Dugong. So that's why the coffee is really good in here, by the way. Anyways, I don't know if I should play more Evo Incense or if I should play more Calm. I just didn't know what the correct amount was. Honestly, it worked out fine. I don't think it mattered, but I do think maybe Evo Incense is maybe a little bit better because you have more evolutions with Pulthy Guys, Rhyme, and Weezing and Dugong. It's up to you, though. But Calm also gets the job done pretty easily. Again, you have enough Pokemon. Not only that, Calm can help you save a Pokemon when you have to discard it, much like a Ranguru does. And then, of course, three research... Four Roxy, two boss. Just straightforward supporter count. Four Roxy to discard. Three research. I honestly don't think I ever wanted to add any other supporters, and especially throughout the tourney. There were no other supporters I really wanted to play. Like, not even like a Caitlyn Cynthia, a Marnie, not even a, uh, you know, not a Bird Keeper, not a Hapu. Just, there's no supporter I really wanted to put in here. So I, I, I think the supporter count is fine. I don't think you need to touch the supporter count. Maybe throw in a third boss if you really want, but yeah, the Eldegoss, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and the more boss you play, the higher chance you have of discarding them anyway. So I, I think stick with two boss and keep the Eldegoss. But yeah, I don't think this deck needs a, I don't think it needs any of the supporters. So yeah. And of course, the U-turn board, I already talked about that. We need the air balloon. And just four triples, four twins. Um, yeah, no, I would not touch the energy guy either. The energy is pretty fine. You kind of just get away with eight energy. I was getting pretty lucky, though, when I was finding my energy. I'll tell you that right now. If you watch some of the stream games back on Hexer's Twitch, which I'll link in the description, um, you'll see, like, there were so many moments where I was getting a little lucky with my energies. I think there were times where I was primate wisdoming into my energy that I needed. That was just the crazy part about this deck, but that's the deck. So let's go into a bit of a tourney report. Okay, so round number one was against a baby Bocephalon deck, and I was like, okay, this should be fine. I can use Dugong to take out multiple Pokemon. I can knock out Bocephalon, and if I use Roxy, I can also then maybe take out a Jirachi. So that was pretty good, and it kind of went the way I expected it. I ended up winning. Dugong was pretty good. I think my opponent played like three Cramorants in his list or something like that. I know he did use a Cramorant early on, so I was able to take that out, take two quick prizes. That's one of the things about the Bocephalon matchup. Is you're able to take two prizes on a lot of their Pokemon that are in on the bench. Like, yes, you can use Dugong to snipe Jirachi, you know, cripple them a little bit. You know, take out their kind of draw engine thing. And then you also take out the Bocephalon. 
but also when they have Zacian or Corio or they're using Cramorant, they're just easy targets for your mad parties because they're, you know, they're super weak. It's very easy to do 200 to 220 damage to knock them out. Um, so, yeah. Then round number two is against another baby blind stack. This matchup was where Dugong really shined. It took me four prizes in total. Dugong had me four prizes, which was pretty awesome. I think I took out two Blounds and two Jirachis with Dual Blizzard. But yeah, Dual Blizzard put in work. Again, being able to Dual Blizzard the Jirachi against Blacephalon is really good because without Jirachi, they're a little bit more slower and it's a bit harder for them to pull off a knockout in return. So yeah, Dulon was really good against this matchup. I took four prizes with it against that Blounds matchup. Round number three was another baby Blounds matchup. And I was excited. I was like, all right, let's go. This is what I like to see. This is clearly our best matchup, 100%. And unfortunately, I ended up losing. This game was actually on stream. So if you guys want to check it out in Hexer's Twitch, check it out. I'll link Hexer's Twitch down below. Um, but yes, I did end up losing two baby Blounds in round three. It's my only loss I took um, outside of my top eight. Um, but yeah, Baby Blounds, my opponent played really well. They didn't bench any Jirachis when they needed to, so there were no moments where Dugong was taking me two prizes, which was the unfortunate thing. My opponent did, they played very smart. They knew what they were doing. I did lose the game because Dugong got trapped in the active spot and they cram ranted my last mad partier. My other option was to bring in an Oracorio GX and hit it three times with Dugong to knock it out. Unfortunately, it didn't work. My opponent just had the resources to move the Oracorio to the active spot, go back and spit shot me, so... Yeah, I took an L there. Uh, it's one of those scenarios where, um, yeah, you need an air balloon in this deck to move Dugong, 100%. Um, or have a Mew in the deck to protect your bench. So, yeah, definitely could have went a little bit better. Round number four is against Eternatus. Now, this Eternatus list didn't play any scoop up net, if I remember. It didn't have any net. So, we didn't have to worry about Zigzagoon bonking at my T's and my bunnies. Um, which was nice, and I don't think it happened. I think there was a moment where, like, I took out a goon early on, my opponent had an Eternatus VMAX, and they let me two-shot it, so they let me swing it for 220. They knocked out my active. They didn't move the Eternatus. I think they had a Dark City in play, and then I was able to finish off the Eternatus, and then all I had to do was boss Crobat, which I had in my hand, and then I bossed up the Crobat to win the game. I got lucky. They, uh, probably should have moved the Eternatus when I was two-shotting it. They had a Hoopa in play that could have knocked me out, and they didn't do it. Maybe they just didn't have a switch. Um, and they didn't have any scoop of net in their deck, so I wasn't able, they weren't able to really do much with the goons. So, yeah. Going into round five, another Baby Blounds matchup. Very excited about this one. Um, I think my opponent dead drew for a little bit. I think at one point they ended up weldering to their Dedenne, I'm pretty sure, which wasn't very good for them. Once again, Dugong did its job. I think at one point when they put a Drachi in play, I was able to Dugong knock it out with Roxy. Um, just stuff happened with Dugong, and of course, Mad Party was able to knock out Kramer because they did get a Kramer out at one point. I remember that. Round number... Six was against Centiscorch. Now this was a little scary. It was a green Centiscorch deck with a Wonders Labyrinth, which is very bad. Now Wonders Lab isn't insanely scary because you have the triple energy for Poltegeist, which does let you attack with Poltegeist uh, with the Wonders Lab in play. But it was still bad, and they did find it. Now I got lucky. They were bricking throughout most of the match. They did not do many supporters, and at the end, when they were in top deck mode, I was able to boss up a Centiscorch, put a double twin energy on my Bunnel B, hit the Centiscorch. It was trapped in the active. They didn't draw a way to move it, and then I just finished off to win the game. So I got lucky there. I was actually like. I was like, oh, well, I lose Wander's Labyrinth. There's no way I can really beat that. Like, I, if I lose too many triples, I'm done for. And I think I did lose a few triples early on, too. So, yeah, it was a little scary, but I still ended up winning, thankfully. Um, thanks to them just kind of breaking a dead drawing. Next up, round seven was against a Pika matchup. This was on stream, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, yeah, I beat the Pika matchup. Um, I did get lucky. Uh, the matchup's pretty straightforward, though. I try, I try to avoid benching too many two prizers, and I just kind of spam them with mad parties. They used two bolt ones to attack, and then they used Pika at the end. They got a big charm on it, so then I was forced to try to push for the damage, and I think I drew the Mr. Rhyme off of a Primate Wisdom. Then I T-braked it away, and that put me over 280 damage, so I one-shot the Pika. And I got lucky. They stamped me to two, and I got lucky off the stamp to two to even be able to pull that off. So I think stamp to two got me a Calm and a Twin Energy or something, and then I... Primate Wisdom or into the Rhyme, and then I tea break. It was nuts. It was an insane. I got a little lucky there. Twin and reset to just reset didn't do anything. Next up, made top 16. You know, I got the ID against the Intellion player, but yeah, top 16 it was against a Mew 3 deck, and I'm pretty sure I went 2 0 against this guy. I cannot remember, uh, unfortunately. Um, I can't remember if I went 2 0 or if it was 2 1. Um, I know the first game it was kind of close. My opponent was very close to winning. Um, but I did end up winning the first game. They did play a Welder Mewtwo deck, so they actually played Jirachi GX in their deck, which is a little bad because Jirachi GX makes that matchup a lot harder because you can't use Poltegeist to one-shot Mewtwo as easily. I think in the first game, I was able to just push above the 280, 300 damage I needed. I think at the end, they put out an, they put a Muck, a Lolan Muck in play, and they had a big charm on it. But I was still able to push for the knockout on it anyway, so got lucky there. 
And then in the next game, I'm pretty sure I went 2-0. But I know in, in the game, the next game that I won, I knocked out the Jirachi, so this gave me access to knocking out their Mewtwo with both of you guys, and that's just how the game went. I knocked out Jirachi, and I was able to take down their Mewtwo to win the game. That was how that went. Um, yeah, I think I took out a Victini V. I think in both games, it started with a Victini V. Um, I think in the second game, I knocked out Victini V very quickly, and then I was able to knock out the Jirachi, and then I finished off the Mewtwo to win. Or I also could have bossed up a Crobat or Eldegoss they had in play, too. And then finally, we made a top eight. This was streamed, and I think there were a lot of people watching this. Um, I think I watched it back and I was like, oh no. Now, I was kind of tired. I'm not going to use that as like a, my excuse for misplaying a few times, but I might have been, you know, I was a little tired. My brain was kind of, I was running off pop and stuff. You know, it's just not very good. Um, <laughs> but top eight was on stream. I think I still played well. I was looking back at some of my plays. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Um, I will say, I, this is another moment where I wish I had another switching card because my opponent was able to win. I went one and two. I did win a game against this Luke Metal deck. It was against Luke Metal. I went one and two. Um, and I think what happened was at the end there, my Bunnelby got stuck in the active. They crushing hammered. They hit heads on the energy. They got rid of my energy. Bunnelby got trapped in the active, and I couldn't do a single thing about it. And I ended up losing because I decked out because I had no way to move Bunnelby. This is where I really wish we had access to another switching card. If they had it, I maybe could have won the game, which, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's kind of where I wish I had maybe another U-turn board. The U-turn board, I think, was on a Dedenne on the bench. That's why I couldn't move it. Um... It was a pretty cool event, though. Um, there was one point, I think, where I bossed up a Hoopa, and um, I was like, okay, well, I was so, I was like, do I want to really waste my boss on a Hoopa? It's only one prize. They have a Crobat in play. I could knock that out at some point to win the game. I ended up bossing up their Hoopa, though, because it was their only attacker that could knock me out in the next turn, unless they got insanely lucky with Metal Saucer, which they didn't. So knocking out the Hoopa was the correct play, took out their attacker. I was able to take another prize after I knocked out the Hoopa. So that was a good play. Their list did play Power Plant. They played three plants, which is really bad because obviously this deck does rely on Dedenne. Dedenne is most of the time always going to be in play. Um, so Power Plant was bad. Um, luckily, though, I was able to use my Dedennes early on before they got the plant in play. So I was able to kind of use my Dedennes before that became a problem. And yeah, I went one and two against Luke Metal. It was streamed. I think in the last game, what I should have done, I think instead of going into the Bunnelby that got stuck, I actually should have went Dugong and then hit the uh, Zamazenta first. 30 damage because I actually did 200 damage with Bunnelby so if I finished off with Dugong I would have knocked it out or if I went Dugong then Bunnelby I would have knocked out the Zamazenta maybe either way though I would have lost my energy anyway so maybe it wouldn't have mattered in the long run but that probably was the better play I really wanted to use Dugong on the on the big stream of uh, top 8 match there for sure but the Dugong isn't really that good against Luke Metal in my opinion because you're not doing much damage to them if they get the Luke if they get the full metal wall off Dugong is literally doing 30 damage and zero damage if they have a goggle on so Dugong is not really that good against Luke Metal So I was like, well, we can't use it. We're not against the right matchup But uh, yeah, Dugong may have been what maybe could have won me the game or at least maybe not made me lose the game As easily against that Luke Metal player I should have went Dugong hit for 30 and then finish off with Bunnelby But you know, I still could have lost my energy. They still I got lucky I think they only got one Karchin Hammerheads out the entire literal game series itself so there's that, but I finished top eight with Mad Party. This is the list. Very fun deck to play, guys. I do like it a lot. Again, there are changes I would make, some changes I would consider adding. Definitely play an Air Balloon, play a Mew, and maybe try to fit in a Chaotic Swell. Have a Stadium in the deck, counter Wonders Labyrinth, counter Power Plant. Try it out. Uh, definitely a fun deck. I enjoyed this deck a lot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be playing in the next Hex Returning. I don't even know if I'll be able to enter the next one uh, tomorrow. He does them every other day, by the way. So if you guys want to go enter, make sure to do so. It costs only two packs, I'm pretty sure. Two Dark Blaze packs. It's a lot of fun, and you kind of get to see the meta and everything. And he does it at a pretty good time, too. He did It, it started at, like, 6.30 p.m. and ran, for me anyways, when I got, when I lost in Top 8. It was, like, at around 1 o'clock or something like that, so... A lot of fun. Definitely check it out. It's like two every other day, I'm pretty sure. Or it's I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So those are, I think, the dates when Hexter does the tourneys. So yeah, if you're looking to have some fun, play some PC Joe, definitely enter these tourneys. I'm probably going to be doing a couple more at some point. You'll see me pop in every now and then. Don't think I'm going to be able to do it tomorrow. I don't know about Friday either. Um, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Today's video, guys. Double upload, tourney report, deck profile on the Mad Party Dugong deck. This was a lot of fun to play. Um, yeah, I'm proud of myself for making top eight. That was pretty cool. Uh, cool deck. Mad Party is a lot of fun to play. Uh, funny enough, I play this in an ADP format. Um, I, maybe this deck could do better in an ADP less format. But since I didn't run into a single ADP deck, maybe it didn't matter. Um, but yeah, ADP was like my main concern. I didn't hit it, so there you go. 
um, but I know there's a few ADP less formats uh, tournaments coming up very soon so if you guys can look into those maybe this is a good play for that tournament who knows you can play all these more roguey one prizer decks because adp will be banned um, but i just got lucky i dodged adp i'm pretty sure adp won the tournament i'm pretty sure it was either i know the finals was the luke metal player i played against and then i think the adp player um so i think adp might have won i can't i wasn't able to catch the finals i was just, i was in bed at that point um but anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you for everyone who was supporting me on Twitter and in chat on my run here. I do appreciate y'all quite a bit. To catch you guys in another Peace Show video tomorrow. Peace out.